Golly goo fans. Okay, this is a true story. It happened when we were kids, 17 years old. The year was 1951, and the time was November. And as you know, as was discussed earlier, kids of today, they talk about various things that are very important. They get into relevant things in life. When we were kids, we didn't quite handle it that way. First, we would get home from school or work and eat very quickly in order to get out of the house, in order to get down to the corner, in order to get the lamppost. Because the first guy that got the lamppost had something to lean against. Second guy could put a hand against the lamppost, third a hand. But if you got down fourth or fifth, you blew the whole thing. Anyway, on this particular night, it was a Monday night in November, Sandy Koufax, who later went on to become a famous pitcher for the uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, and Herbie Cohen, who is now a, one of the outstanding sales consultants in America outside of Chicago, and myself, we were all kids in the neighborhood. Me, Herbie, and Sandy are standing around discussing one of the major topics of the day, which was the relative degree of our liking of ice cream. Herbie was a big Briars man, I liked Borden's, and Sandy liked Carvel, and we were discussing it. Discussing ice cream on a fall or semi-winter evening in Brooklyn, New York, November 1951, a Monday night. Sandy happened to mention that he'd been in New Haven, Connecticut with his stepfather a couple weeks prior, had been to a Carvel place where they actually gave him three scoops of ice cream for 15 cents. This immediately started a violent argument between Herbie and myself and Sandy, saying that no, they could not serve ice cream for 15 cents, three scoops. So we bet him. Herbie bet him $5, and I bet him $3, and the only way to prove the bet was naturally to go from Brooklyn to New Haven. Herbie had a car, we got into the car, and of course the main fact is we could not go without taking Bernie. Now in every crowd, there is a Bernie. At least there was in Brooklyn then. Bernie was the kind of kid you call him up and say, Bernie, would you like to go to Afghanistan? I'll be right over. That was the kind of kid Bernie was. And that's the way I spoke, out of our funny way I speak it. We drove to Bernie's house. We walk in, and Bernie is just starting to eat dinner. And his mother, Dora, and his father, Nathan, are sitting there. And we walk in, and we say, Bernie, want to go to Carvel? We, of course, did not mention New Haven. We just said Carvel. There are 200 Carvels in the New York City area alone one, two blocks from the house. So Bernie looks at his mother, and he says, Mother, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with Sandy and Larry, and Herbie, I'm going to go to Carvel. You have having dairy anyway. It's no big deal. I'll have a little ice cream. I'll be right back. Bernie gets in the car. We say nothing to Bernie. We get down Bay Parkway to the Belt Parkway. Belt Parkway through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Bernie has said nothing. Brooklyn Battery Tunnel to the West Side Highway, the West Side Highway to the Major Deegan Expressway. We're now off the Major Deegan Expressway. We're on the Merritt Parkway. The sign says Connecticut, Massachusetts. Arrows going. It's about 9.30 at night when we hit the Merritt Parkway. Bernie Lee <laughs> leans forward, taps Herbie on the shoulder, and says, I hate to interrupt this uh, fascinating conversation you're having about football and everything, but uh, I was looking at my watch. And I seem to recall it was about three hours ago you came to the house and you said, Hey, Bernie, want to go to Carvel? You know, and I said, Hey, Mother, I'm going over to Carvel. I'll be right back. Now, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be out of place, but uh, I'd like to know uh, where the hell we're going. So Herbie says, Sandy says, Bernie, that there's a Carvel in New Haven that serves three scoops for 15 cents. Bernie says, That's impossible, Sandy. I'll bet you all the money in the world they can't. Bernie forgets about his mother and father. Bernie bets Sandy. Now we get to New Haven, and New Haven is experiencing a very strange phenomena, a snowfall. The earliest snow in the history of New Haven, it is snowing on this Monday night in November in New Haven, Connecticut. Sandy spots the Carvel place, and the guy is naturally shutting up for the night. It's about 11 o'clock, and it's snowing, and he's selling ice cream. He's about to lock up. We pull in, and Herbie says, wait a minute. We all don't get out of the car because this guy, Sandy, could know this guy, and it could be a whole setup to lose our bet. Larry, you get out and just throw out a 15 cents worth and see how many scoops you get. So I went out, and I put down 15 cents and said, uh, chocolate, please, and sure enough, three scoops. We lost the bet. We decided it shouldn't be a total loss, and this is such a value, three scoops for 15 cents, that we're going to eat this guy out of Carvel's. And we're really eating them. Bernie figures, if I have 14 of them, I'm almost even. So we're just eating Carvel's. And I'll never forget the guy. He says to us, this is a true story, gang. The guy says to us, hey, fellas, uh, 
I don't want to interrupt you or anything. It's none of my business, but uh, I'm having my best night since July 4th, and it's snowing. Uh, what brings you guys up here? So we tell him the whole story of how we got to New Haven, and he didn't really believe it, that three kids, four kids would travel from Brooklyn, 17-year-old kids, to eat ice cream at his place. He also didn't believe that he was giving away a scoop extra and that no one in New York ever, ever heard of this, and he had a value going because no one ever told him at Carvel. So now it's midnight. And we're finished, and we're loaded with Carvels. We get in the car. Now, with three, four, 17-year-old kids, we decide it shouldn't be a total loss. We go to see what New Haven looks like. And Sandy knows New Haven because he used to go with his father. So we're driving down the street. I can never forget the scene. There's a red light up ahead at the next corner. But at the corner we're coming through, there's no red light. Sandy says, cut down this street, and Main Street's a block over. So we make a right turn, and we're going down toward that street. And this, this wasn't a particularly large block. It was so, you guess, I guess two two cars could pass each other. It really wasn't large. We're going down the street. Bam, a car pulls in front of us. Cars are pulling behind us. People are coming out of buildings with signs and stickers and bumper strips, and they're all putting it on all the cars, including ours. A guy is actually climbing on Herbie's car with a huge sign and putting a rope and attaching it to the car. Bernie says, you think we ought to inquire as to what this occurrence is about? So I, I open up, and it says on the sign, vote for Mayor Lee. And what it was, was, on Tuesday, they were going to have the election in New Haven for Mayor Lee, running for re-election. By the way, interesting sidelight. Mayor Lee was elected for like 18 years, and, and must have been 15 years later, I interviewed Mayor Lee on the Surfside Six houseboat, and he remembered this whole story. It was real. Anyway, we discover that in New Haven, Connecticut, you can't electioneer on election day. So all the campaign workers had to take down all the signs and this kind of thing. And what they were having was a rally at the New Haven High School for all the campaign workers for Mayor Lee, who's going to be elected the next day. And we happened to be right in the middle of the start of this rally. So, and it really wasn't a parade, but all the cars flowed down Main Street. And we left the signs on a car, and we went to the high school. By the way, Herbie left the Mayor Lee sign on his car for four weeks. The New York City mayor out of the election was three weeks later, and in Brooklyn, District 52, Mayor Lee got 73 write-in votes. We had the sign on our car. Shows you the electorate. Anyway, we go to the high school. There must be 400 people there. And now we're inside the gymnasium. We're having the rally, and they're serving for all the campaign workers donuts and coffee. Now we figure, what a bargain. We lost our bet to Sandy. We've already had a lot of Carvels, but donuts and coffee, and we're stuffing up. I mean, we're just living it up, drinking coffee and donuts, and Sandy is eating, and Bernie is eating, and everybody, and Herbie's walking around. Sandy comes over to me and says, Hey, Larry, do you know what Herbie's doing? I says, What? Herbie's going around telling everyone what a terrific campaign worker you were in the Mayor Lee campaign. Now, we don't even know what Mayor Lee looks like. So I go around, I start talking about Herbie. Up on the stage, they set a little platform. Mayor Lee is going to thank the campaign workers. No big speech. And they put four chairs. One for Mayor Lee and one for the campaign chairman. And the campaign chairman comes over to Herbie and I and says, Fellas, we've all heard tonight how hard you two worked. We'd like both of you to come up on stage as a sample of youth in politics. Now, you got to picture the scene. They had all the 400 people sit down... The coffee and donuts are in the back. When Herbie and I went up on the stage, Sandy had an attack. Absolutely collapsed, laughing. And he collapsed so much that something occurred to Sandy. Well, they couldn't get the stain out of the pants. He ruined his pants. Sandy collapsed. And the only way he didn't want to laugh out loud, so he stuffed four powdered donuts in his mouth, and, <laughs> and he breathed only by siphoning air through the straw. Bernie, on the other hand, was oblivious to the entire thing and just proceeded to wave to us. Hi, Herbie. Hi, Larry. He also proceeded to put 28 donuts in his jacket pocket. Bernie figured by the end of this trip that even though he lost a $5 bet to Sandy, he was ahead $3 on coffee, donuts, and an extra scoop of Carvel anyway. Now, they sit me and Herbie on the stage. Sandy's collapsing. Bernie's waving. 400 people are sitting. Herbie leans over to the campaign manager and says, why don't you let Larry introduce the mayor? So the campaign manager introduces me. I get up, and I come up 17 years old. I don't even know the man. 400 people. I got Sandy lying on the floor. Bernie waving at me. I said, ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked to introduce Mayor Lee, but I think Sandy should do it. I think Herbie should do it. 
So I turned it on Herbie. Herbie gets up and does 25 minutes. Herbie does the history of America. Herbie does Paul Revere. Herbie does the Constitution. Herbie leads up. He's got this crowd in a frenzy. He leads up. He says, I give you not just the next mayor of New Haven, but the next United States Senator, next governor of Connecticut, next president of the United States, Mayor Lee, they go crazy. Wapo screaming. Mayor Lee thanks him. Bam, over. Two o'clock in the morning, everybody's leaving. As we're walking out, Mayor Lee sees the four of us, and he says, Fellas, could I talk to you one minute, please? And he even asks his campaign chairman to leave the building. No one is in the building. The lights are out. The moon is shining through. The four of us are standing there with Mayor Lee. Mayor Lee looks at Herbie and me and says, Fellas, what I'm going to say now is probably going to break your heart. And it hurts me to even say it. But if I didn't say it, I couldn't sleep with myself. I just... I couldn't exist. It would drive me crazy. So Herbie says, go ahead, Mayor, say it. He says, well, I hate, it may discourage you for politics forever and for politicians. Go ahead, Mayor, say it. Well, he says, I've lived in New Haven all my life. I have four campaign headquarters. I visit all four of them every day and have been for two months. And I, I heard tonight how hard you worked stuffing envelopes and delivering packages and but I got to tell you that I've never seen either of you in my entire life. And Herbie said, uh, we never seen you either, Mayor. And Bernie said, we wouldn't know if we passed you on the street. We don't know who the hell you are. We're in this whole place by accident. So the mayor looks up and says, where are you from? Sandy says, we're from Brooklyn. He says, Brooklyn? He says, yeah. Do you live in New Haven? No. Visiting someone in New Haven? No. Going to college, going to Yale? No. He says, well, what, what brought you to New Haven? Herbie says, well, Mayor, Sandy said that there was a Carvel in New Haven that served three scoops for 15 cents. And Mayor Lee said, that's impossible. They can't serve three scoops for 15 cents. So we proceed to explain to Mayor Lee where this Carvel is, and now we come back to Brooklyn. When we get back to Brooklyn, it's about 5.15 in the morning, Snow is now falling in Brooklyn. The snow has come down from Connecticut into the New York City area. One thing we forgot to do, and that was to tell Bernie's parents where we had gone. As we drive down the street to Bernie's house, the snow is falling. Standing in front of Bernie's house are his mother and his father. It's called Jewish masochism. They cannot sit inside and look out the window. They must stand there and let the snow fall on them. It's called perpetual suffering. We get out of the car, the four of us, and we're walking toward them. And Bernie's mother says what every mother has ever said to a teenage son. Bernie, tonight from me, you took ten years. Ten years, Bernie, from my heart, you took tonight. Bernie's father took a different approach. He took one hand out of his pocket. He had gloves on, one of the fingers missing from the glove. Took the finger and approached Sandy and Herbie and I and proceeded to bang our chests and say the following words. Bum, bum, bum. Ya bum, ya bum, ya bum. You took my Bernie away. Bum, bum, bum. Bernie's mother says, hold it, Nathan. Maybe there's an explanation. Bernie, where were you tonight? And Bernie says, I went to Carvel. She said, don't lie, Bernie. Don't lie to me. Don't lie. When it got to be 8 o'clock, two hours, you weren't back. I made Nathan put on his galoshes. We walked to the Carvel two blocks away, and I said, where's my Bernie? And he said, your Bernie ain't been here all night. So where did you go? He says, I, we went to Carvel. We didn't go to the Carvel. In, uh, in, in here. We went to another Carvel. She says, where? He says, in, in New Haven, Connecticut. So she goes, that's another ten years, Bernie. And it was screaming, yelling, people looking out of buildings. Bernie's father grabs Herbie by the chest. He pulls the clothes together, pulls them right up to his nose, and says... What the hell did you go to New Haven for? And Herbie says, well, Sandy said that there was a Carvel in New Haven that served three scoops for 15 cents. And at 5.15 in the morning, Bernie's father said, that's impossible, they can't serve three scoops for 15 cents. <laughs>